proton was first imported to Britain over two years ago from the Kuala Lumpur factory. Since its launch initially through the Lada dealer network, they've sold over 22,000 examples and become the fastest selling new make ever to enter the UK market. It's already overtaken some very well-known makes, and so far this year their sales are up 30%. That's in a market that's over 25% down on 1990. In February, the 200 dealers sold 1% of the total UK car market. So with most of the industry crying their eyes out over their profit figures, why are the all too few private buyers out there with ready cash choosing to buy a Proton? As the popular Japanese cars become ever more sophisticated and thus more expensive, there seems to be a gap opening up at the bottom of the market for people with three or four year old Japanese cars who appreciate the reliability and the ease of driving but who now can't afford to bridge the gap for a new Japanese car. This is the 1.5 SE Aeroback model at £9,000. It's the top of the range. You get power steering, central locking, electric windows and mirrors. You've got a sunroof that winds back over the top of the roof as you adjust it. And you get a nice stereo cassette player. It's an easy car to drive, the waistline is low, so you've got generous glass area all round and visibility is very good. The dashboard is a bit plasticky, early Japanese style, and uh, the switches are distributed rather haphazardly, in particular the warning flashers are buried down here, instead of being on a big red button where you can easily get to them. The shape is also rather reminiscent of Japanese cars a few years ago, perhaps rather angular styling compared to the smooth curves of today's corporate fashions. In any car, it's the little things that tend to annoy. In the Proton's case, it's a buzzer that goes off infuriatingly whenever you open a door and the key's left in the ignition. If the car was mine, I think I'd find the fuse responsible and simply chuck it away. Another extra on the aero back is the adjustable driver's seat, although you have to be very careful not to get your nails caught under the edge of the cushion as you operate it, unfortunately, as I did. Now another surprising extra on the saloon version is a built-in aquarium. Now apart from the fact that loose objects in the boot can fall into this well, it's also full of water. And it's not just down in this pocket. In the spare wheel well, there's evidence of a, an awful lot of water finding its way in. I don't know where it's coming from. Of course, maybe just water leaks on this particular car, but there is evidence that the fit and finish isn't quite up to Japanese standards. Under the bonnet, well-proven Mitsubishi power units, 1.3 and 1.5 litres. The 1.3 develops 77 brake horsepower, the 1.5 litre unit, 85. Despite the difference in power output, the performance of both cars is virtually identical. Maximum speeds around 103 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in 12 and a half seconds. So why buy the bigger engine version? Well, the company says it's got much improved mid-range pulling power. A nice choice of trim material in the Proton and quite nicely finished inside. With the driver's seat set for someone of my height, uh, there's not an awful lot of leg room and uh, headroom distinctly restricted. On the aeroback version, there's a split rear seat which folds forward for access on long loads. For the class of car, the accommodation inside is pretty good. I must find that fuse. The front seats are quite supportive and comfortable over long distances. Now, although all the 1.5s have power steering as standard, the 1.3 doesn't. The steering isn't very heavy and it's a nice rack and pinion system. This is the base car of the range, the 1.3 GL Saloon. At £6,800, it comes with a 24,000-mile major service interval, a two-year 50,000-mile warranty, and a six-year 60,000-mile powertrain guarantee. But it's shorter on equipment than the top-of-the-range model. 
doesn't have electric windows. You have to adjust the mirror by hand. I say the mirror because there's only one. It's easy to see why the Proton has hit the mark in Britain. It's not a car which will appeal to the enthusiast. Performance, road holding and ride are all adequate rather than outstanding. However, it offers low running costs as well as the reliability of Japanese components. So the Proton 1.5 SE is the top of the range model and it offers excellent value for money, promising good reliability and the second hand values seem to be holding up well. Against it, it's rather characterless, the styling's a bit dated and the layout of the controls rather haphazard. All Protons run on unleaded fuel and catalysts will be available later.